the NIL era has begun. And that's where we're going to start tonight. And I'm going to try and dress this up in a way that makes you care a little bit more than you normally do about these segments. So NIL cranked up as of 12.01 a.m. on the East Coast this morning. Everything's different, but I want to assure you, everything's okay. And you've seen me freak out on the show before, so if it wasn't okay, I'd let you know. Things are going to be okay. Now, some very, very quick observations that I saw today. I was one who was online at 12.01 a.m. on the East Coast, and I wanted to see the reaction. And as expected, I had a little intuition, but as expected, it was about 100 reporters for every one interested fan. And so you had a bunch of seagulls. It was like, go, go, go. And there was no one was there. It was just a bunch of reporters talking about it. But that's okay because it was interesting. And there's a market for this. But all these deals started getting announced and everyone was talking about it. And so I observed that. Then this morning, when the light of day is shown on the NIL era, the first six to 12 hours of it, boy, there were some horrible straw man arguments out there, weren't there? I saw everything from well, these kids, we shouldn't let them do this. They're going to have to pay taxes on this stuff. Or, my goodness, money could make someone selfish. Ugh, it was bad. It was really bad. They're going to have, I saw a question that was presented, not tongue-in-cheek, as a dead serious argument against NIL. And the argument was, um, what if they don't know how to pay taxes on this stuff? Well, I'm going to tell you what will happen. They'll get popped, just like you would, whether you're 18 or 48, you'll get popped. And then what will happen is you will learn a lesson the hard way. Doesn't always have to be the hard way, but they'll learn the lesson the hard way. And they'll probably just go on living their life. So that takes care of that. That's no reason not to uh, push NIL forward. And the second one I wanted to address, I was doing a radio hit with Sean Fox, who has terrible movie takes, but, but really good college football mind, down in Louisiana earlier today. And we were talking about this whole concept of selfishness is going to creep in the locker room and it's going to divide and it's going to, you know, one guy gets paid more than the other. It's going to be horrible. And it's basically all it is, is real life. Essentially, that's what's going to happen. Real life is going to creep into a locker room. Let me spoil the ending for you here. If you've got good culture, then your culture is going to flourish. And if you got poor culture, then this will absolutely tear you apart. Something else would have anyway. Maybe this is just the straw or the dollar bill that breaks the camel's back. Money, as is the case in real life and will be the case in your local locker room, does not do anything other than turn the volume up to 11 or 12 on the character that already exists. So if you've got a really good culture, this is not what's going to fracture it. And if you've got a poor culture, it's going to fall apart regardless of what it is specifically that contributes to it. So no, I'm not worried about kids paying their taxes. And no, I'm not worried about whether this is going to tear apart locker rooms. And I certainly don't take the added 13 steps of saying, and that's why we shouldn't do it. If you just have some, well, in your mind, well-reasoned approach or logic-based approach, and you just philosophically don't believe in kids being paid while they're in college, I respect that argument a whole lot more than these. We can disagree, but at least, at least you got some sound principle in your argument. All right. Now, let me tell you why this is not a bad thing. It's not a horrible thing. There will be some ups and downs. There will be some bad that comes with this. But let me give you some pros, and then we'll move on. Pro number one. I want you to think about it this way. Director Colin and I were out in the, uh, what do we call this thing? A newsroom, I guess? Control room? Office? It's a ghost town is what it's been over the last year. We were out in the office about an hour ago, and we were listening to a segment we did on this show a year ago. And I was proud of it because sometimes we get it right. And I think we got this one right. What if this whole NIL era does far more to police self-behavior correction than coaches ever could? Think about what we have now. For the first time, we have players with actual skin in the game, as you and I would define skin, the kind of skin that folds and gets put in your back pocket. And now they finally have it, and they're responsible for it. And they're being paid in direct correlation to basic market principles as determined by their value. Well, you ain't worth nearly as much if you're not on the field because of disciplinary reasons. So I want you, who have been in the coaching profession out there before, I want you to think back. Or maybe you've dealt with a kid in a classroom, or maybe it's a parenting situation and you've dealt with a kid, and you just can't get through to them. There are some techniques I would suggest, but that's another show. You just can't get through to them. Well, let me tell you what has worked 100% of the time throughout history and will continue to work. When you've got money involved and you start getting into someone's pile of money, that's when you got their attention. And so it may be 
that your left guard, who you cannot get to stop eating himself out of a job to save his life, or your safety there, that will not meet curfew, and you got to suspend him or else the other rest of the team revolts because you're not holding everyone to the same standard, you can't get them to fall in line. But now there's money. Now there's skin in the game. And now they realize there's an actual financial hit I take if I don't follow the letter of the law around here. It could very well be that this self-corrects a lot of behavior that coaches to this point throughout history have not been able to correct by holding playing time over your head. Because it could be, folks, I know this is hard to believe, it could be that people value money even more than playing time. It could be that they value money even more than their reputation. Is that good? Is that bad? I'll leave that to you to decide. I'm just saying, I think this could go a long way in policing behavior. Pro number two. This is the one we talked about at length a year ago, and I saw some people tossing this around today. NIL is creating a whole new avenue, like 15 avenues, as a matter of fact, for new blood to come into college football. I'm not talking about players. I'm talking about branding, and I'm talking about marketing dollars. So here's what college football is right now. It's a huge product, and a lot of brands out there want to be associated with it. But there are only so many shelves in the store. There are only so many games on TV, in other words. The SEC on CBS Game of the Week. I know you feel like they got about 4,700 ad breaks per show, but really, there is a limited amount of room there. And Aflac takes up a lot, and you got all across the spectrum of platforms, Dr. Pepper, and you got all kinds of major brands, the car companies, Ford, Toyota. Well, it used to be that if I were JP and Collins Supplement Company, I mean, we got a nice little market cap here, and we got six or $700,000 in our marketing budget, but we can't compete with Aflac. I mean, we don't have that kind of money to spend. And we want to be associated with the college football product, but we just... We can't get on that shelf. Well, now there's a new avenue in. There's a new way that this is a fictitious company for now. JP and Colin Supplement Company, we're doing okay. We got, a couple of, we got a couple of branches. We're trying to branch out a little bit, but we can finally get in the game. We're just not doing it by buying an ad spot or buying naming rights to a quarter of the ABC Saturday Night Game of the Week or putting uh, branding inside stadiums. We're going to go and enter into some strategic partnerships with players who play in strategic markets that we're trying to target, and that's how we get in. And that's going to happen, not by the ones or twos, but by the dozens and dozens. New, new brands that wanted to kind of get themselves associated and get some rub off college football, they're at the table. Now, you may not think, if you're a Nebraska fan, that that means a hill of beans to you, but it really does. Because everyone uses this phrase, health of the sport, health of the sport, health of the sport. You guys think you're assisting in the health of the sport by extending that playoff, and I disagree. Well, I do agree, and we can all sing this in unison, that having more money come into the equation is not the worst of things. And there's another pro here. I saw our old buddy Shannon Terry mention this today. And uh, as is usually the case when he talks money, I do agree with what he said. He said, has anyone thought about what this is going to do to the financial literacy of your average college football player? One of the biggest gripes a lot of people in the business world and in academia have is when you go to play football at Auburn or you go to play football at Michigan State, well, that's what you're doing. You're playing football there. And you may be majoring in whatever you want to call yourself majoring in. You're there to play football. And you exit, as is the case with many football players, without a sound grasp of financial literacy and basic economic principles, and you're ill-equipped to go out into the real world. Now, that's not just a problem with athletes, but it is certainly exclamated with athletes relative to your normal student population. Well, now you're taking a crash course, even if you're not getting official class credit for it, in economics and also in entrepreneurship. It's a hard word. It always has been for me to say. You're getting a crash course and you're learning some tough lessons that maybe you would have had to wait till age 25 or 26 to learn. You're learning them right now. So I think the new marketing blood at the table, I definitely think the self-policing of behavior that this brings, and I also think the financial and entrepreneurship literacy that you learn, these are pros. They're not being talked about nearly as much relative to the cons, but these are pros. Now, there is a con that I had tossed my way. Uh, one of you, I can't remember who did it, but in the late kick inbox, about uh, two or three hours before the show. And I read it and I agree. I was talking, uh, this is not what you said. I'm going to use this to tee up what you said. I was talking to someone the other day. I will not mention the name, but they were talking about correspondence they had had with a high profile assistant at a major university. 
And they said they had had a consultant, as many of these programs have had, they had a consultant come through. And that consultant is working in conjunction with that university to basically guide them through these treacherous NIL waters. And they gave them a list of the rough value per player on their roster. And they were shocked that the most valuable player on their roster was not a quarterback and was not a guy who had even started a game yet. And they said, it's because of the social following. And this is not rocket science. The more followers you have, you see on the screen right now, if you're watching, uh, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, you more followers you have on there, that's where the real traction is going to be. And so here's one of the potential cons. Now, Colin and I were kind of tossing around amongst ourselves, is this really a con or is this just something different? Well, I'll let you decide for yourself. So you tell me how you're going to interpret this. How do you grow your branding? How do you grow those numbers? Well, you get your name out there as often as you can, and you make your name matter as frequently and as long as you can. Let me tell you where the rubber is really going to meet the road on this before we move on. Recruiting, that's where. Now, again, this may not even be a con to you, but I would be shocked if we didn't see a new trend where kids push their recruitment deeper and deeper into the process to maximize headline space, to maximize traction and impressions, as we would call them in the business, thus growing their social accounts. And they probably get a lot more creative with the way they commit too. Now, we had seen a trend away from that recently. With the new and early signing period, we had seen a disproportionate amount of the top rated kids signing early. And so now this may be another correction to the recruiting market, and obviously we have a vested interest in that, seeing as how we are 24-7 sports. I don't know that we call that a con. I just think we're going to call that something very different that you need to keep an eye on. So I have a pretty good hunch that's where we're headed over the next few cycles. So those were my takeaways from NIL. I would be very interested to get your feedback on that because I guarantee you there's some pros and cons that I haven't even thought of that you guys have probably been thinking about the whole day.